I'm going to just show a couple of bitmaps. A rad that was, you know, if you're doing development and visual development and multi device development, your return on investment, don't even think about the price of our products, the amount of technology that you have access to, the different types of applications you can build for your company, for your customers, or for yourself. And you get the full benefit of native code optimizing compilers for both. Delphi, in the case of Delphi Week, C++ as well. So I'm on my Macintosh, MacBook Pro, notebook computer, and I use Parallels, which is a VM. Some people use VMware, some people use VirtualBox or, or other things for their virtual machines. And this is a uh, virtual machine. Let's see if I can get back to it. Okay, I'm there. This is a virtual machine that's running Windows 3.11, and it has Delphi 1 installed. So if I go into this window, and bring up the program group. There's the Delphi icon. This is the Delphi One client server edition. It's got the database desktop and database engine and a server manager for, for servers. And so I can bring up uh, the Delphi application. So it had, it runs really fast though. It's like, it's like you know, usually on, a, on those older machines, we'd see the help about box come up. So there's, uh, there's the about box, this is client server. If I let's see if I say Alt T E A M, then I get the team members that were there, and it keeps going through them. So those are all the people. There's Charlie Calvert and Chuck J and and Danny Thorpe and uh, some guy David I David Powell who's been around for a little while. So in any case, there you just, there's uh, plenty of articles about Easter eggs uh, inside of all the versions of Delphi. I think I put a blog post. Uh, Brian Long has a list. If you just look for Delphi Easter eggs, uh, Brian Long, something like that, you'll get to it. But this was the ID in Delphi 1. It, you had still the same. It's We've changed some of the icons a little bit, but they're, they're the same. Sw swapping between the form view and the code view, that's, you know, that icon over there, toggle form unit. Uh, here's the run. There's the debugging, pausing, a uh, step over, step into. We have step out of and a few other functions that are available. Back in Delphi 1, we didn't have the structure window. We didn't have UML modeling and other things. Uh, you had the object inspector, so we could go in and say, this is my my first Delphi 1 app. And at the launch, uh, one of the classic uh, applications that we build uh, is the old edit box uh, button list box. So we'll put an edit box and a button and a list box down. Let's put the list box over here and we'll put the uh, button up there and we'll put the edit box over there somewhere. And I'll make this one a little bigger. This was before alignments and, uh, and anchors and all those kinds of things. So um, for form inheritance and everything else, we go in here and, uh, and get rid of the text. We did this originally because people would put a lot of components down. They wonder which one they're talking to. So we put the name uh, of of the uh, of the of the class or component there, and then uh, the caption. Let's uh, just put the add button, and then we'll double click and bring up the event handler. So that it's a sender of T object of type T object, and the classic first app is to take the button. And uh, and set the text property, sorry, the caption. Oh no, different app. List box one dot items dot add. I was doing actually the second of three applications that we test on almost every compiler that we come out with. So this third one is the edit one dot uh, text property, right? So there, the first one is usually just file new application, hit run, and that'll bring up a form. And if it runs, that's pretty cool. Second one is put a button and put an event handler for the button, just changing the caption of the button. And then the third one is the edit box, list box uh, button. And then hit run, and it'll compile and run. Let's save it. I saved it before, so we'll just uh, we'll save that again and right over it. And here's the application. So hello, world. And I should have made the button the default handler, but I didn't do that this time. So I have to go and click on it, Delphi rocks. And I think one of the great things is this app still works, not only on VCL on every version of, of Delphi, but this same app will also work on FireMonkey. 
if you put an edit box, a button, and a list box with Fire Monkey, list box one dot items dot add edit one dot text uh, works perfectly. And we actually use this when new compilers that we're working on, when the the form works and the one button app works and the edit box list box button works, uh, that we ring uh, bells in different R and D centers around the world. Uh, and everybody comes running to go, what was the announcement? Oh, that was the 64-bit Delphi. Or when we first got FireMonkey iOS 64 working for the Delphi and now C++ languages in our development world. So it's always fun to see uh, all of this working. In fact, you can still use a lot of the textbook uh, Pascal code, read, read LN, write LN, uh, if you're building console apps, writing to files. I think the only difference is in uh, some of the early versions of Turbo Pascal, uh, when you wanted to close a uh, a text file, you just called close, and somewhere along the way, uh, we decided that was too confusing because there were different closes, so we changed it to close file and assign file instead of assign and and uh, to assign a file to a dot you know underlying file system name. That's one of the few changes you have to make in in the in the runtime library uh, in these textbook examples. But uh, I remember when that happened, I made that and I was like, oh. What happened? <laughs> it makes sense because before I remember noticing there was a conflict. Yeah. So that that's probably the only uh, change. I know I had some really old uh, programs. But otherwise, I mean, the, the database engine, although in XE7, we, we made the database engine a separate install. It's still available. You can get it from the user register, user download area. If you've got some Paradox or DBase-based apps, you're still maybe using for small business accounting or whatever systems. Um but it still works, and uh, it's pretty cool. The mouse is a little twitchy on these fast machines inside of Windows. I'm not sure how to get it to slow down, so you got to really move slowly. Of course, maybe it's because I have an optical mouse instead of an old uh, traditional mouse. Could be there. the resolution's too high. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let me uh, switch back over to Jim, or maybe it's coming back to me because I know I on this other machine I have a couple videos yeah. uh, to play. Let me uh, switch back over here. There's a again. few questions here. Actually, let's do a couple questions real quick here. Let's see. Um, so we're talking about app method. Uh, and I'm going to put I'm going to put those slides on SlideShare. So, um, and I'll put a blog post to the. Uh, so here's a question: If was the Arc support added for all compilers? Or just certain compilers? So Arc is still only on the mobile compilers for iOS and Android. We use Arc for uh, memory management. Uh, for for memory collection, you can still do the traditional um, create, free, and dispose. And if you're on an Arc based system, then it'll it'll work. If you're on a non Arc Arc system, it'll work just fine. So on a non Arc, you'll need to when you create uh, instances, you'll need to free them and dispose of the memory. Um, on the mobile devices, because memory is more at a premium, we do that into the covers. But again, all the code you write and the patterns you follow for, for standard uh, desktop systems of create, free, and dispose still works, even on an ARC-based uh, mobile compiler. Uh, teams looking at what we might do uh, for ARC, because some people would love to have that same uh, capability for Windows. But uh, for me, I like to create free and dispose that's just that, that was the way i was trained uh years ago well what, many years ago i was doing assembly language programming where i could do just about anything uh but in in these worlds of dos and windows and other platforms uh it's just sort of in in my nature to to want to know that i'm uh in charge of everything and that i'm responsible for it what is that with great power comes great responsibility? I think that was from the Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man. So right now, Arc is on mobile? Yep, I just answered that. Oh, okay. Um, uh, let's see. Here's a question about Linux server support. Does that mean no FireMonkey or VCL? Uh, that's correct for now. Right For now, the team is focused on Linux server support. And there's a question about new CPU support. I mentioned that we've already announced iOS 64 is coming soon. But stay tuned to the roadmap for more. Yep. Um, like OS uh, X64, I don't think that's on the roadmap yet, but when the roadmap updated, you'll see yeah. on there. Win 128, just kidding. 